the biggest, in my view, was what's known as Bentwaters or Rendlesham Forest. So I want to talk to you about the UFO. He says, oh, you mean the one I touched? And here's this thing hovering out in the trees ahead of them. As I recall, two of them come over and shoot a beam at his feet. What are some of the other incidents that you studied? Oh, I think the, the biggest, in my view, was what's known as Bentwaters or Rendlesham Forest. Um, yeah, Chuck Holt is probably the best guy on this. Uh, Chuck was the deputy base commander at uh, uh, Bentwaters, and um, this is uh, volumes written on the particular case, but I found it very significant because of the number of people involved. And it's one of the few cases, most of the time you study these things and the credibility, you know, this is one that gets stronger uh, over time. And more and more people coming out, and now they've found uh, one fairly recently radar confirmation that there was something over the base. And... Um, it was not a singular event. What I learned from Chuck later, this was had been going on for a long time. And it turns out this was almost like the ranch kind of thing where the events had been reported for decades. It just keeps but happening. The, huh? It just keeps happening. Of, of various kinds. I mean, some of them were lights in the sky and strange phenomena uh, being reported. But the particular one here was, and it started... In uh, late December, uh, 1980. Uh, by the way, you should come back to Cash Landrum because it's interesting that that happened at the, the same night. <clears throat> but so this one's out there, and they see what they think is a, a plane has crashed or something off the base. And so um, uh, Roger Pennison and John Burroughs and another one go out there, and. Um, well, they have to run it. They're, this gets very sensitive now because you're leaving a military base and have to leave. The, these are uh, air, air policemen. Leave the weapons behind because, you you know, the SOFA agreement as to what you can and can't do and where you can do it. So they go out. And uh, it's interesting because years later I called uh, Jim Penniston, who was a staff sergeant uh, at the time. And so I want to talk to you about the UFO. He says, oh, you mean the one I touched? And actually walked up on a, this. There's a heavy thing sitting on the ground. It's in, like I said, late December. And what was interesting is there's actually indentations on the ground. And I've seen the plaster casts from this. So you had physical evidence of this thing sitting on the ground, must have had weight. He talks about certain symbols that he saw and, and wrote those up. Um, so the first incident uh, happens. A few days later, they're having a end of the year party or Christmas party, and Chuck is there, and uh, they're about to give out the awards for you know being nice people and that. <clears throat> and he says, the provost marshal comes in, he says, they're back. He says, who's back? He says, the UFOs are back. And Chuck tells us both, but it was, I'll take care of this. One of the worst decisions you probably ever made. You know, thinking, I'm going to go out and we're going to resolve this. So he gets, uh, I forget who the sergeant was who was with him, who gets uh, radiac meters and things to check on radiation and whatnot, and he goes out. Um, they go out, outside the base, and he's using the radiac. Sure enough, there's stuff above background noise, and here's this thing hovering out in the trees ahead of them, and it starts manipulating, staying away from them, then splits into five pieces and zips off, and... As I recall, two of them come over and shoot a beam at his feet. And so he goes back. So he's recording this at the time of, of what's happening. And that eventually uh, got released. And then the conventional wisdom was, oh, because of the periodicity to these lights that are appearing. And he says, it's got to be the a, a lighthouse at some distance away. 
And they went back and looked at it and said, you can't see the lighthouse from there. But we have over 60 witnesses now. Um, are you familiar with the PRP, Personal Reliability Program? No. Okay, well, again, the other aspect of <clears throat> what was not known at the time was that Bent Waters was the forward most nuclear storage area in Europe. <clears throat> and supposedly this thing came over and it was shooting beams down into the storage area. And I had met with Chuck. Oh, I've now moved to Los Alamos and then years later I heard about this and I knew where he was as a civilian. I had set up lunch, like to meet with him. And what he says was because nothing, so there was no debriefing or anything of that nature at the time. Uh, and he says, oh, I'm finally going to get debriefed because I'm coming from Los Alamos and now I'm there to ask questions and whatnot. He... Um, he is convinced that a lot of his people were screwed with. Uh, after this, their careers in general did not fare well. Uh, Burroughs has had significant medical issues. And some of this does get into the classified. Uh, I know they had trouble even getting his uh, medical records. I think Kit got involved in even obtaining his medical records because he was trying to address heart problems uh, that he had. Uh, but again, it's the amount of witnesses, the physical witness, recurring event, um, you know, pretty damn significant. But as I mentioned, the cash landrum happens at the same time. And Cash Landrum's a case where UFO was seen, importantly, it's fairly close to Houston, a remote area, two women and a boy are driving down the road, and here's this UFO that's kind of shutting in, I suppose they think flame out or something, and there are, depends on the count, 22, 23 helicopters that are supposedly circulating around it. Now, this is, the I think it's the 27th of December. And if you know anything about what goes on between Christmas and New Year's, basically nothing. So anyway, uh, what happens is they stop the car and they get out. Betty Cash runs around in front of it. Uh, Landrum opens the door, stands behind the little boy, Cody, gets out, looks, he gets scared, runs around and jumps back. He's now grown and they've, they've talked to these issues. <clears throat> so the point was that they were exposed to some kind of radiation. And uh, Betty Cash, who had got out in front, in fact, later died from leukemia, but she has whole body radiation. Landrum, not so much, but she's standing with the car door, so it's partially blocking it. And Cody, the little boy who runs around and jumps back, so he's got minimal. So everything physically fits. Fast forward a few years, um, <clears throat> they sue the government, specifically the Air Force, uh, over this event because of danger. And the supposition here is this was some kind of test vehicle <clears throat> that was out there in the radiant, and particularly because of the helicopters. Um, what happens is that uh, the Air Force looks at it and says, ain't ours, and by size, those, those are Army helicopters. And so it comes to Army IG. Well, remember, I used to work there. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.